it's it's an interesting tone because it's 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 like a hybrid between the substitute teacher movie and the sex comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's really grounded in its characters. They're really re- relatable. They're really compelling. But then it has like outrageous, raunchy comedy. Guys, give it up for Team Doing It Woo! right here. <laughs> It's a little thing we do. Am I well, allowed to give it up too? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Give it up for yourself. We did it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, guys, congrats on your premiere at South by. I- I'm not gonna lie. Like I read the premise for this one, and I-, I was like, I'm I'm all in. It sounds absolutely <laughs> hilarious. You co-wrote it together. Mm-hmm. Uh, break it break it down for us. Well, what's it about? What inspired this one? Yeah, we co-wrote together with another amazing writer, Neil. Um, and it is. I think it spoke to both of us. I mean, I'll speak from my point of view. It was just a story where I was like, oh man, if I had this growing up, this would have changed my life. Life. And so I immediately knew that I wanted to get involved. And I also knew that I wanted someone like Sarah to be our leader, our fearless leader, because I think it is so important for this to be not only told from a female perspective, but also a, a woman of color, I think, really colors the story as well. Yeah, yeah it's um, it's about an Indian-American 30-year-old vir- virgin who gets a job teaching high school sex ed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's about, um, you know, how we talk about sex and sexuality to young adults. Um, and it's told through the lens of Indian culture, conservative, you know, conservative culture, but also the American high school curriculum, Mm -hmm. um, and like what teens have access to and, you know, how we should be talking to them about sex and sexuality, albeit it's a satire. We're making fun of it, but we're just trying to start a conversation. Yeah. Is LL Cool J on the soundtrack? Is there doing it on the soundtrack? No, but there is another song on the soundtrack. Um, an original song. Okay. By the infamous Lily Singh, she oh. wrote an original huh. song in two days did I do that? called "She Doing what? It." Oh, I d- yeah, I did. Um, wow. And it's yes. uh, it's sort of an homage <laughs> to that track, but also it speaks to the movie and it kind of tells the story of the movie. And it's a uh-huh. really funny track. It runs over the end credits, um, and it's so funny and it's original. And when she she sent like one of the first versions, I was like, my mind was blown. I was like, uh-huh. oh my god, you're a rapper too? <laughs> no, that's very sweet. You do it all. She's multi- well, because you, you know what? a lot of the the reason I had to make an original song is because a lot of the songs that exist aren't super aligned with what the message of our movie is mm-hmm. which is like uh imp- i mean there are a lot of great female artists out there but i'm saying when you look at the older songs they're they're kind of from the male perspective and they're kind sure. of about sure. I- i'm a dude and i'm really good at sex and this is like just different it's like a little more real and it's from a female perspective yeah did you guys go into like any sort of modern day sex ed classes for research was that sort of part of the process I mean, I didn't, did you go into classes? I didn't did go into class, but I, to, I spoke with sex ed mm-hmm. teachers. Uh-huh. I also found NGOs that actually teach really comprehensive progressive sex ed, and mm-hmm. they were the thing that I didn't have in high school. We were talking about just like my high school gym teachers taught us sex ed, and it was basically <laughs> the banana condom Why? exercise well, and, like, yes. and like a pamphlet on venereal diseases. That's totally. like right. all yep. we got. Yep. Um, so in talking to these NGOs who actually teach it, I was like, wow, this is like, this would have been great. Um, mm-hmm. Why don't we have this? So yeah, there yeah. was some research. I did, I did the same thing. Well, I, I know a lot of teachers are my cl- cousins. I was going to say closest cousins, but I guess everyone every, sorry other cousins my favorite cousin um she's a teacher and she i was talking to her about it and she told me all about how some parents opt out of it and it's like a big deal and i was shocked because i don't know i guess in my mind i was like this was just a problem that existed when i was in high school like this is probably totally figured out but it's actually not yeah. it's not figured out at all it's still a really taboo subject it's still not taught in all schools and mm-hmm. it's not very thorough comprehensive at all so i was shocked to learn that yeah, and it's interesting how different it is all around the world. Like totally. my nieces are growing up in France right now, and like seeing what's taught to them is is really different from yeah. Because you're saying there it's a condom and a baguette, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, Stupid. I, I, yeah, I could imagine it's probably a little different in France from like yeah, I mean, Louisiana, like, yeah. especially. Yeah. Um, what do you guys remember about your own sex ed experiences that were applied to this story? Okay, so I had one two-hour session um, by my gym teacher as well. <laughs> it's always um, the gym teacher. Always totally. Mr. It, was, it was very fear-based. Uh-huh. And it was actually, we weren't even told. We just walked in from yeah. lunch one day. It was like, okay, we're going to divide you all boys over the girls. And the teacher was so uncomfortable. She was like, this is the worst day of my life. I can't believe I have to do this. Um, it was very fear-based. I remember one of the questions was, can you get pregnant from anal? Um, that was one of the main questions, and I remain unclear on that answer, honestly. So clearly the education wasn't great. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep, yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right it, it, what is the, what's like the tone, how would you guys describe the tone of this? Like a lot of times, 
I mean, I'm just going to jump to the assumption, like you hear when it is this, this R rated. Is it R rated? Yeah. Yeah. Is I it? Think so. Would you? Is it raunchy? It's raunchy. It's raunchy. It's it's an interesting tone because it's 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 like a hybrid between the substitute teacher movie and the sex comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's really grounded in its characters. They're really, really relatable. They're really compelling. But then it has like outrageous raunchy comedy mm-hmm. um, that are that's more heightened. So it's like it's kind of tonally complex. I'd say it's like it's it's sort of like like women. It's like Lady Bird meets American Pie. Okay, there you <laughs> wow. go. There you I'm go. Like, okay. There you I go. I like that. Was going to ask that. for your reference points. There they are. <laughs> I mean, it's I just came up with that. We yeah. never that's about amazing. That. No, I love that. I, I co signed that. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. Again, I'm si- I'm fully signed up for this one. I can't wait to see it. Um, Lily, your your acting career is moving at like full force. Thank uh, you. How did you how did how did you how did this one sort of evolve your acting career? What did you get to do that you'd never tried on screen before? Oh my. Well, this is a sex comedy. Yeah. I used to make back to school videos. <laughs> so this is quite quite <laughs> this is quite the leap. Yep. Um listen, I mean before this film, I mean Sarah I've talked about this a lot. I did grow up a little bit more reserved. You know, I never got the talk. Even saying the word sex stressed me out. This film got me used. I mean, we had 10 meetings about a dildo. I had uh, two <laughs> masturbation scenes. Like, I have really stepped out of my comfort zone. My mom was on set some days helping as well. In fact, the biggest thing that happened because this movie is me and my mom had conversations that we've never had in our life. So mm-hmm. an hour before I submitted the script, I literally FaceTimed my mom and I was like, okay, I understand I'm 35 years old, but I'm calling to ask if I can do this movie. Am I allowed to do this movie? <laughs> And my mom said the sweetest thing in response. She said, do you think it's okay? And I was like, oh my God. But then the second thing she said was, what's in the movie? And I said, okay, we've never talked about this before, but there's a vibrator, there's this. And then she stops me and she goes, do you use vibrator? And I was like, (laughs) and that is the day I passed away. And I've been dead ever since then. R.I.P. Yes. So I've stepped out of my comfort zone a lot for this film. Yeah. Well, you said your mom helped on set. So what did she, what what areas did she help with? Yeah, that's a great question on the sex comedy that I mean, my mom, you know, listen, um, she was the cultural consultant actually. So she helped with some of the scenes that take place in India and, Mm -hmm. you know, some of the language stuff. Um, She was super helpful. She was like a really integral part of the film, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, she was very integral. Especially there's a sequence that where um, Maya's character, Lily's character, Maya is sent back to India. So mm-hmm. um, she was really great with like helping us out with like cultural, you mm-hmm. know, uh, consultation and like accents and totally. w- it, would this really happen? And she was amazing. It was really fun to have her on set. She was like totally. But really then she started essential making essential worker. Then she started making sex jokes, and I was like, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so our our relationship evolved. Yeah, this, this sounds like a true bonding. Totally. Yeah. This was. Yep. Sarah, what, what, what tell us about like what impressed you about what Lily does in this film especially you know stepping out of her comfort zone lily is for me a really ideal actor she's like because i love female comedians i mean they're like my favorite leads even the movies that i love you know i love like la strada nights of Capiria, julieta messina she's like one of my favorite old actresses and um and um lily just she's funny but she's grounded um she's she's just and she's fresh and she just she, and she was super dialed in she was so easy to work with she's so good for a director but also for production because she's like she wears so many hats so she gets it you know because we had to move really really fast on this movie mm-hmm. um and so she really just it's she's like i feel like a slam dunk and i think she's so good in this movie people are gonna love it she mm-hmm. really like it's a she's gonna be like she's like an iconic substitute teacher who wouldn't want her to be the substitute mm. teacher in their <laughs> high school she was so great um so yeah it's just and she's she has great comedic timing great instincts she's always super prepared she knew all of her lines mm-hmm. i told her on the first day i'm like i get really upset when actors don't know their lines and she was like never missed a beat and she gives a huge monologue at the end and my script supervisor and i were like she didn't miss a single line <laughs> so yeah i mean it's sort of like um a really great experience when she's, you know, they have comic timing, they're Mm -hmm. prepared, and she's fresh. You know, she's just like a new face in cinema, and I think she's gonna make a lot of movies, and it's... That was the, this is the best TED talk I've ever heard. This is the best (laughs) TED talk subject I've ever heard. I love everything about this. Thank you. Thank you. That's very sweet. So you hated it. You hated working. It sounds like you absolutely hated it. She's wonderful. Uh, uh, Um, Guys, the Oscars are tonight. Uh, big one of the big storylines around the Oscars is they're adding a new category next year. It's it's best casting. So I want to know, Ooh. folks in the business, what else should they add? Because there's a couple other categories people want to see. 
What is your, what are, do, you, do you guys think there are categories that are not yet represented that should be at the Oscars? Hmm. That is a good question. There's like, some of you hear about are like, you know, stunts, best stunts, uh, best uh, voice performance. You know, I will say stunts are really, really Stunts important. are super important. Because also I like agree. the different types of stunt people I've worked with, some of them are rock stars. And yeah, I think stunts is really good. I'm glad casting is getting a category because it's so essential to yeah. making a good movie. I think stunts is a really good answer yeah. because I've learned, I mean, I haven't done a lot of stunt work, but from the limited stunt work I've done, I think the average person and moviegoer might not realize that like something as simple as an actor tripping is usually a stunt yeah. Like stunt people actually have a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, and, and I feel like they don't get enough credit. So I absolutely yeah. do agree with stunt. It takes years to become a good stunt double totally. and to become mm. a good stunt artist. So it, it's like, it's this tough crap. But to yeah. really answer your question, what I really want to see at the Oscars mm. is uh, just women. Uh, mm -hmm. getting the credit they deserve, but not only getting the credit they deserve, getting the roles they deserve, getting the positions on and off camera they deserve. I just read an article literally like 15 minutes ago about how actually there, in some areas we've taken steps back. So I know this is like, Barbie was such a big deal and this has been dubbed the year of uh, the girl, but there's still a lot of work to be done on and off camera for, for females to get kind of the role 100%. they deserve. 100%, I think, I mean, in the Directors Guild, we're still a very small percentage of the, of the union. So I think, yeah, echoing Lily, it's so true. Hollywood is descending on Austin, Texas this week. There is going to be movie stars, musicians everywhere. You guys will probably run into someone. I want to know, what is the most starstruck you've ever been meeting somebody else in showbiz? Oh, my. I, I See, there's a lot of answers I could give because I love a lot of people very shamelessly. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to say there was one time that I met Beyonce. Mm. And I do believe in my heart that you cannot meet someone greater than Beyonce. I don't know of a person that would exist. Anyways, um, I met her and I was like, I'm gonna act cool and I completely was like, oh my God, I love you, thank you for existing. Ooh. And I like just completely rambled and I I think about it once a week. Yeah, it haunts yeah. you. It, it, it haunts, haunts you. me, but then I was like, who? you could literally feel the air in the room disappear when she walked <laughs> in. Everyone, every single person, other famous people were like, <gasps> yeah. so yeah. I feel like that's okay. I yeah. forgave myself for that. Yeah, especially when, it ha when you're not expecting it and you can't prepare I mean, for I that wasn't. moment. And you wasn't yeah you just right it just like beyonce out. can't just simply appear one has to prepare yeah, right, exactly. for at least a week yes you know what yes. i mean sorry do you have one? Oh my god i never met beyonce but i feel like i'd be on the floor 100 percent. Uh, um i don't know i i just don't know i you know actually my last movie i worked with heather graham who when i was mm. a teenager she was like the it comedy girl mm. and i did have a little out of body experience when i was directing her on the last one and she's actually a friend of mine hi heather um she's a friend now but i i feel like the first time i was like directing her i was like you were like one of my favorite comedic actresses when I was 13 and I was like, I just had this moment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's, but I don't know. I, I, I just yeah. hadn't have that Beyonce moment. Yeah. It's because people have it when they meet Sara. There you go. So she yeah. has there the opposite go. experience. There you go. Yeah. Well guys, thank you for being here. I can't wait to see doing it. Thank you. It sounds amazing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, once again guys, team doing it. Team doing it. Team boom, doing boom, it. boom, boom. <laughs> thank you.